Hello everyone, welcome to Big Data Thoughts. Today we are going to talk about DevOps. This is something, uh, this term has been getting used a lot these days. So we'll have a look at what DevOps is, what it is used for, what are the benefits and some of the prominent tools that are there in the market. And we are going to cover all about it under 10 minutes. So let's get started. Let's first look at what is DevOps. Essentially, DevOps is a short form of development plus operations. Initially or sometime back, we used to have two different teams. So one team which will do the entire development or the developers who are responsible for writing the code and doing the unit testing. And there, there, then there would be an operations team who would take care of taking that code and putting it into different environments, basically deploying the code. Uh, and there, can, there will be multiple environments like development, testing, pre-prod, prod. So the operations team will take care of taking the code from one environment to another, monitor the code and then do the uh, maintenance of the servers, take care of what is happening in their production environment. And if there are issues that happen with that code, then it used to come back to the development team to fix the bugs. So there were two separate teams with separate responsibilities, one handling the entire development and the other handling the operations or the ops part of it. Now, when we had these kind of two separate teams, why was there a need for something like DevOps or having an integrated team, which we call as DevOps team? The biggest reason was that these two teams, the development and the operations teams were working in silos they had different responsibilities and they were fulfilling those responsibilities. There were a lot of scenarios where there was manual code deployment. Of course, when the code deployment is manual and there are multiple environments to take care of, then there are bound to be errors. There, we had longer cycles to production. One reason was because it was manual. Second was since there were two separate teams, there had to be a handshake between the teams. If the handshake is not proper, then there would be issues. And even when you do a proper handshake, it is still two different teams with two set of responsibilities. So the process is not that seamless. So these were the kind of issues prior to the DevOps concept. So gradually people realized that it is much easier to have one single team with a single responsibility or ownership of developing the code as well as maintaining that code in terms of deploying it to different environments, taking care of where it is getting deployed, whether the deployment is successful or not, how the code is deployed from one environment to another. So all of these responsibilities were combined together and a DevOps team was formed. This made the whole process very, very seamless and with a single goal in everybody's mind that the code needs to be written and deployed successfully and the application needs to operate. So now no longer do you have two teams who are probably having some discussions or you know sometimes arguments in terms of who does what because there is a single goal for everyone now. So this is a picture that I took from the DevOps article website and this very beautifully summarizes what is DevOps all about. So when we say it is two teams merged into one with a single responsibility and those two teams were development as well as operations. What does that really mean? What are the different responsibilities that these teams used to perform individually? And now it is getting done by one particular team. So first of all, plan. So anything that we want to develop, there will be a planning phase. Then there will be a code uh, phase where the developers are actually working and building that code. After the code, writing the code, doing the unit testing, building the code, there is a test cycle. So there will be testing done. And then after all this is done, which we typically call in a developer world as cut effort, the code unit test, and then we build. This is then released. When we release the code, we know that it has been developed properly, meeting the requirements, the unit testing is done. There is a entire sanity check done on things that they are working. This release or this bundle is then deployed. After deployment, we have other important steps like how it is operating in the different environments and whether 
all of this in each and every environment getting monitored or not if there are issues there has to be a communication back and forth in terms of fixing those errors and then there has to be a re um, rebuild and a redeployment so it's a continuous cycle that goes on with so many steps in between the initial phases that we see right the plan code build test these also will get performed multiple times as and when we get issues and we may release patches for our software we may do some enhancements we may fix bugs so this whole cycle will keep on going in a nutshell devops will contain all of these activities and this whole cycle that is happening on and on for that particular application now let us look at how each in the each of these steps or these things that we spoke about they happen in a sequence so first of all there is a team of developers who are doing the cut effort which is the coding and unit testing effort as per the plan and the requirements of the application then they check in the code to a code repository that can be any code repository github bitbucket gitlab it can be any one of them but there will be a code repository the developers will develop the code and check in into a repository then there will be a server there ha there has to be a server where this code will be deployed so the server needs to be prepared and the code needs to be packaged and deployed whether it's a var it's a jar there can be multiple ways in which the code is packaged and it will be deployed on the server after this packaging and deployment there is a development testing and production so there are multiple environments that have been prepared the development environment testing environment product pre prod can be there and production so then this deployment happens to all of these environments one by one so it is deployed to development and it is deployed to testing there is a whole uh, cycle of testing and when everything goes fine then it is deployed to pre prod or prod so as of now the developers check in they package deploy it goes through multiple environments then there is a whole release management process that goes in which means how are we going to package the code and release it to a to each and every environment if there is an issue how do we go back fix it redeploy rebuild and redeploy this whole cycle of rebuild redeploy for the issues or enhancements is the release management process it's a whole process in itself so this release management has to go through and now all of these activities that we saw here include starting from development till release management is done by this devops engineer that's why we see the sign of devops is also infinity circle with dev on one side and ops on one side that's the combined one which is known as devops it's a infinity symbol because it's going on and on it doesn't stop with one deployment or one release it keeps on going with the fixes and enhancements so it looks simple in this diagram because it's a very high level picture of what is happening but there are tons of activities that go uh, keep on going in this whole cycle and there are a lot of tools and technologies that are getting used to build this whole pipeline this release pipeline this check in pipeline now what are some of the things that we need to keep in mind so we we saw what is devops why it was needed and at a high level we looked at the whole process of what is happening from development till deployment and where devops actually is playing a role so best practices to have a error free very seamless kind of a operation is to have continuous integration continuous delivery and there are a lot of tools available in the market to do the ci cd which means we should have a process inbuilt or established which is not manual which is a automated process where whenever we check in code it triggers the build it triggers the test it triggers the uh, releases to different en environments so that's where the continuous deployment and delivery comes in about taking that packaged code tested code into different environments then having microservices makes complete sense because it is much easier to develop test deploy and manage then infrastructure as a code which is nothing but using server uh, the backend we don't have to really do everything manually or set up our environment we are having that infrastructure also as a code <clears throat> so that is where the technologies 
that we use these days for serverless come into play then monitoring and logging there is a absolute need to have tools and technologies inbuilt into our pipeline which will do the monitoring logging give back the results to us so telemetry is extremely extremely important and last but not the least communication and collaboration so there are different people doing a lot of uh, different set of activities and there is a communication and collaboration needed for this entire process to work seamlessly now what are the benefits of devops this is like a standard thing to assume that when we are automating the processes when we are taking ownership and there is a single team taking responsibilities it is bound to be more predictable it is bound to have greater quality reduced risk because now we have a common goal so the risk of failures etc and with automation the risk is reduced it is more resilient cost efficient and the the most important thing or benefit about having devops culture in place so devops is is actually a culture more than a concept it's a culture having that culture in place gives us a lot of predictability reproducibility and maintainability these are very very important for any any application that we build even the time to plug in new things becomes much much uh, lesser so these are the benefits that devops provides now uh, as i said there are multiple tools in the market and maybe in subsequent uh, videos we'll talk about those in detail but just to snapshot give a snapshot of the tools the i have put it into different categories for version control mainly the tools that are used today are github bitbucket and gitlab these are the code repositories or version control tools that we use for doing container management because we are talking about automatic automation in terms of our release pipeline deployment pipeline so we'll definitely be using containers docker and kubernetes are the most prominent container management solutions for monitoring typically what people use is dynatrace or prometheus or app dynamics these are very good in terms of giving us a good monitoring solution there are many other in the market but these are the prominent ones then configuration management tools like ansible chef puppet and ci cd the most prominent one is one is jenkins but people also use bamboo so this is a this is a snapshot of tools that are being used in the devops world <clears throat> so i hope this gives a very quick overview of why it was needed what is devops the benefits and some prominent tools uh please like share and subscribe to the videos and we are going to look at different uh aspects of devops in detail in the subsequent videos thanks a lot everyone